everybody. What's up? It's Courtney Pearson. You also know me as Caitlin Meadows. Um, I am super excited because the third book in my Havenwood Cowboys romance series is coming out in a, just a little over a month. That's November 22nd is when it releases. So if you haven't already listened to the first two books, they are here on my channel. The first one is called Inheriting the Farmhouse. It's about a woman who, when her grandfather passes away, he bequeaths her his farmhouse. And she goes to settle the property, not knowing that a handsome cowboy is living there as the farmhand. So that's the first one. The second book is Fixing Up the Farmhouse. And it is a romance between Luke's brother, Dawson, and this main character's best friend. Um, so each of the, there will be five books in the series. Each one features one of the five Holden brothers. The third book is a Christmas romance. As I said, it comes out November 22nd and it's got a little more of a fake romance trope in it. So I thought it would be fun to share a little teaser with you in preparation for its release. So here we go. And this is Allie and Bryce. Twangy Christmas music played overhead. A pretty waitress with dark hair and braids greeted me. I said hi, took the menu she offered, and stilled. I was vaguely certain the waitress had said something else, but I didn't catch a single word. I was too busy gawking at the tall slice of muscle staring right at me under the brim of his cowboy hat. Bryce Holden. Were his eyes really that blue? His broad shoulders, his angled jawline, the quirk of his lips, they were all devices put in place for the sole purpose of scrambling my thoughts. I rapidly forgot what I was doing here why I was standing there, staring. But then he removed his hand from his pocket and strutted in my direction, and with a whiff of his musky cologne and the nearness of his proximity, I remembered exactly why I was here. My stomach didn't stop tying itself into knots. In fact, it started one and then just kept right on going, so that by the time he spoke, there was a whole clump in there. We meet again, he said. You keep on staring at me like that, and I'm going to think that whole business proposition excuse you gave me for meeting up was just a ruse to get closer. His mouth had a lazy curve like a river hugging around a roadside with nothing to do but trickle, rendering him the casual, look atable kind of gorgeous that I couldn't take my eyes from. I'm not staring. Please, I was totally staring. For some reason, having him begin our conversation that way only gave me license to look more. All right, then. Me neither. He looked right at me, and the longer he looked, the more my stomach sizzled. Several more moments passed before he said, You want to sit down? Sitting is good. The air was growing thin. I needed something else to focus on before I hyperventilated and passed out. Bryce would have to administer CPR, and his mouth on mine was something I wanted to be awake for. Oh my gosh, where did that thought come from? Two minutes in, and I was already picturing kissing this man? Then again, could anyone blame me? I hid my smile, grateful when the waitress approached our table with glasses of water. I ordered a cheeseburger with fries. Bryce ordered the same, and then we were alone at the table, left with nothing to do but face each other. Lest you think otherwise, this is about business, I said, beginning my practiced spiel. I had to make that fact absolutely clear. This was business, nothing more. Now you've gone and done it. You just used the word lest. Things must be serious. I toyed with my utensils. Is there something wrong with that word? Just that I don't hear many people using it. I'll tell you right now, I don't have much experience with medicinal type things. If you're looking for a doctor, I'm not your man. I am not looking for a doctor. I could hardly believe him. Was he trying to be funny? What did he think the word lest means? He linked his hands on the table in front of him, only to glide them away when the waitress returned with a basket of the breaded zucchini he'd ordered. Bryce dipped one into the sauce, indicating for me to do the same. I declined. I couldn't eat, not until I got this out. I supposed I should make small talk and get to know him a little bit first, but I was too flustered to think about anything else until I said what I needed to say. First things first. Do you have a girlfriend? I asked. Bryce burst into laughter, which turned into a heavy cough since he hadn't finished swallowing his appetizer. Hacking, he reached for his water glass and took a long swig. That's the last thing I expected you to start out with, but under the circumstances I shouldn't say I'm surprised. What did that mean? It was a perfectly reasonable question, considering where I was going with this lunch. However, he didn't know that. Not yet, anyway. I hurried to clarify. I promised that question was necessary. I don't want to interfere with anything as we get into the reason I called you here, and if you have a girlfriend, that makes a difference. Oh, it does. He wiped his mouth with a napkin. Yes. The corners of his attractive mouth twitched as though he were fighting a smile. For some strange reason, this made my mouth do exactly the same thing. He mastered his lips, keeping them straight, which made them no less appealing. Stop staring at his mouth, idiot. 
No, Miss Allie, I don't have a girlfriend. Should I ask if you're romantically involved? Not yet. You mean you want me to ask you later on if you are? No, I mean I'm not romantically involved yet. His eyes narrowed. He took another drink of water. I'm guessing the word yet has something to do with this. Much better than lest. I knew he knew what yet meant. I'm not normally this transparent with complete strangers, I said. We're not strangers, and you aren't being transparent at all. We kind of are. I ran my fingers along the tines of my fork. I only know that you're the brother of the man my cousin is marrying. Luke is a trustworthy guy. Dawson is too, so I'm assuming it's a family trait. Bryce cleared his throat. He lowered his chin and peered at me through his dark lashes. What are you trying to get at, he said. I was nuts. I never bared my soul to anyone like this. I'd, it had taken all I could do to confess the truth to Bex that the store was failing. This required being more transparent than I ever was, but I was that desperate. For some reason, it was easier confessing all this to hot, a hot stranger than it would have been to bear my soul to my best friend. Not that I had one of those. I own a store in Burley. It had been open for almost two years, and no matter what I try, I can't seem to keep myself in the black. I'm on the verge of closing, and if I do, I'll lose all the capital I've invested in it. Not to mention that I'd have to deal with the shame of closing and the awful financial crisis that awaited, and the prospect of working a regular job instead of one of my choosing. I didn't want to have a boss. I wanted to be the boss. I set my own hours. I handled all the parameters of my life, and that independence was everything to me. Mom spent my childhood breathing down my neck to make sure I didn't step out of line. I wasn't about to let anyone else do that to me ever again. Bryce listened with rapt attention. I'm in agriculture, he said, sitting back as the waitress brought over our cheeseburgers. The smell of grilled meat teased my stomach. The fat fries were sprinkled with some kind of red seasoning. I took one and dipped it into my fry sauce before taking a bite. The savory taste of fried potato with tingling seasonings made me salivate. I'd love to help, he went on, but I'm not sure what you're getting at. You want to borrow money? Are you looking for an investor? This time I nearly choked on my fry and started coughing. I took a relieving gulp of water. What? No! Oh my goodness, that is not why I called you. I'm going about this all wrong. Belle is my cousin. Yeah? Your future sister-in-law, I smiled. I have an idea of how I can save my store. Bryce remained quiet, watching, listening. Belle inherited our grandparents' house, as well as a, as a collection of extremely valuable Christmas ornaments that I'd love to get my hands on. I want to ask her and see if she will give them to me. He sank back into his seat, leaving his food untouched. That's what you were looking for in the basement the other night. Yes, I had only gone down to see if they were there. I see. I'm sorry, I'm still not seeing how I can help you with any of this. He took a bite of his burger. Tasty as mine looked, I couldn't do the same, not until I got through this though I did have another few fries. I wiped my mouth before continuing. Belle hates me. She and I have the worst relationship cousins can possibly have. He considered this. I'm not all that close to her either. But you are the groom's brother. You got her little list of important dates, didn't you? Yeah. And you'll be going to everything on that list? What are you getting at? I need you to date me, I said, spitting it all out. If you don't have a girlfriend, let me be yours. Take me with you to these events. I don't have a lot of time. The people who own my building are foreclosing at the first of the year, and I need to be there. I need a reason to be near Belle so I can broach the subject. I expected more laughter and mockery at my offer, but to his credit and to my vast relief, Bryce took me seriously. He rested his forearms on the table and stared me down. Why this insistence on moving so fast? Is foreclosure your only concern? It's for my dad. He always gave me a Christmas deadline for things, and I'm sticking to that, too. Granted, once I got the ornaments, I'd have to find a buyer for them, but still, I'd be another step in the right direction. His brows clustered. You're her cousin. Why don't you just give her a call? The sounds of shattered glass and broken snow globes echoed in my memory. Remember the part where I said she hates me? The night you saw me in her basement, she caught me there just shortly after, and let's just say it didn't go well. If I try bringing up the ornaments again without building some rapport with her first, she'll think I'm awful. Even if I were to get her alone, I'd never be able to swing the conversation in that direction without stirring up old feelings and making her think I'm only after the ornaments. Bryce's lips thinned. So I bring you with me to these events, and that gives me time to talk to Belle before she gets married and leaves on her honeymoon. It'll give me time to warm up to her, to change our relationship so we can get to the point where she might be more open to hearing me. She might be more willing to give me the ornaments. I knew how it made me sound. Pathetic. Desperate. Ridiculous. But still, Bryce didn't knock me for it. He set his half-eaten burger down. You could just get a loan. 
A loan was out of the question. I'd done that to open the store in the first place. Between my apartment, the lease on my Prius, and business fees, I didn't need another payment. I'm already in the red. The point is to dig myself out of it. Bryce inhaled and sank into his seat. His penetrating gaze never left me, and for the first time since I got here, I wished he would look somewhere else. But this was a job interview. I kept his gaze, pinning mine to it, showing him how de determined I was. What about investors, he said. Who's going to invest in my failing boutique store? Most investors only put their money into something if they were guaranteed to make a profit. I was still working on the profit part of things. Minutes ticked past. Growing uneasy under his scrutiny, I ate a few more fries, skimmed the bar, and the elderly couple who'd made the bell jangle over the door. The lyrics to Winter Wonderland resonated overhead. You should have asked Colton, Bryce finally said. Colton? He's on way better terms with Luke and Belle than I am. Luke can't stand me. I'm not sure I'm the best one to help you with your problem. This was the worst news ever. Was he serious? You... Luke and I had a falling out. The only reason I've been invited to any of these things is because my mom keeps insisting I be included. But I'm the black sheep. You should have seen the way Luke freaked out when I showed up at their engagement party. He can't stand me. I'm not sure how much help I'll be. Details from the night of the broken snow globe, as I was beginning to call it, trickled in with vague recollection. Bryce standing on the outskirts of his family gathering. Luke avoiding placing a chair near where Bryce stood. Bryce following me to the basement because he had no one else to connect with that night. His brooding, sulky, hot vampire face, he'd acted like an outcast, because he was one. Go figure, I picked the wrong brother. So, there's that little teaser. Christmas in the, at the Farmhouse comes out November 22nd. If you haven't listened to the first two, um, Inheriting the Farmhouse and Fixing Up the Farmhouse are here on my channel. I'll put the links to those in the description of this video. If you like this little teaser, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please feel free to leave me a comment and make sure you hit the like button. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, I hope you'll consider doing so. And thanks so much. Have a great day.